Alright everyone, you remember that Gaza Pier that I actually originally praised? I thought it was like one of the better ideas that the Biden administration has had. You create a floating pier, you can dock aid there, and then you uh, cart it into Gaza, and you've created an effective choke point so nobody can rush the aid. You can create an orderly queue, so to speak, um, and, and, you know, it raises efficiency, it becomes cheaper, and I figured it's sort of like if I pay a couple hundred dollars I've got a shitty old lawnmower. It guzzles gas. I decide to invest in a new one that uses half as much gasoline. Well, I save money long term, hopefully. That's generally the hope. The expectation is that you're using less fuel, the efficiency is higher, you're getting the same result, and you're uh, paying less. And, and so over time, it pays itself off, basically. And that's what I thought with the gossip here, initially. Um, when they announced the project, I said, okay, that, that's actually a good idea. This is something, if they can pull it off, this is going to be a good thing. Uh, they haven't pulled it off. That's the whole problem. No, instead, um, it took them longer than expected to build the pier. It got rocked by rough seas. It's like, you know, you can't fucking float a piece of metal on pontoons and hook them together because there's choppy water or something like that. So then that delayed it. Now we find out that in a few days they're going to disassemble the whole thing. Uh, what the fuck was the point then? The original idea made sense. This is going to be a protracted, probably, uh, problem in Gaza. You know, the fact that the Israelis might agree to a peace deal with Hamas, um, which is basically who they're dealing with, even though Netanyahu doesn't want to admit it, uh, is meaningless. Uh, most of Gaza has been leveled. Uh, they're still going to need an enormous amount of aid for an, a protracted period of time. Why are you disassembling the pier after paying tens of millions of U.S. taxpayer dollars to make it in the first place? And you didn't even apparently make it that well. Um, this could have been an example of something the Biden administration did and did well. Uh, but whether it's because they wokeified the military or they just can't get their shit together, it's probably both. Um, th this plan fell through as well. Again, something that I initially praised. I thought that it was a good idea. I'm like, okay, the, the, the stuff in Gaza that's happening should never have happened in the first place, and if Donald Trump had been re-elected, I guarantee that it wouldn't have. He's correct when he says this, by the way. But if you are going to have a humanitarian disaster, you're going to have to give aid, because you're a big country, um, and you've got a lot of uh, surplus grain, things like that, and have no choice. Well, if you can raise the efficiency and make it cheaper for the taxpayer, well, th that's a good thing. It's an improvement. An attempt is being made. <laughs> but you can't even do that. The, the Biden administration and, and the military generals, as they are right now, are so inept that they can't build a pier. Look, if you were to just take random dudes from the U.S. military, just sample them randomly, Give them the materials, they'd probably have built a better pier, they would have built it quicker, and it would still be in operation more than three days from now. Uh, instead, you wasted tens of millions of U.S. taxpayer dollars for literally nothing. You accomplished absolutely nothing. And this was one of the attempts that actually was plausible, like, like the Biden administration had developed a policy that actually could have worked, and uh, in the end it didn't work out so well. And it's not a huge surprise, though. I mean, the Biden administration manages to ruin pretty much everything it touches. Look at the infrastructure projects and stuff. Uh, ha half of them will probably go cylindro mode now, won't they? In the end, it'll be shovel-ready 2.0, but this time ten times more costly. The Gaza Pier was actually fairly easy to build. Okay, we take these uh, metal slats, we put them on pontoons, right? We bolt them together, and we make a pier, and then we can offload there, so we can do it offshore, so people don't rush the aid convoys and shit like that, like happening at the southern end of the uh, Gazan border several times, including a live fire scenario by the IDF at one point, because people were starving, and they started rushing the food trucks, and they thought they were under attack. That was a fairly gruesome time, by the way. Makes sense. On paper, everything's fine. You've got the pontoons, you've got the metal slats, you've got everything that you need. You've got people that are engineers and shit in the military. They're skilled enough to be able to put together a fucking float. But you still can't accomplish that. Now it's uh, going the way of the dinosaur almost as soon as it began. So it's in operation for a week or, or something like that. Because of the rough seas, you know, damaging it before. 
Um, it's probably because of military bureaucracy, which should be absent from the U.S. military almost completely. Basically, a bolt came loose, so you're not allowed to unload. That's basically what it boils down to. Oh my god, something terrible might happen. Well, yeah, something terrible did happen. You wasted a bunch of money creating a pier that never really operated in the first place. The idea was perfectly fine. In fact, it was something that I supported. It makes sense. It's efficient. It's wonderful. You don't have to offload the aid at a port that might be controlled by Hamas. You don't have to offload it in Egypt and then cart it several hundred miles across the Sinai Peninsula. Well, I mean, it's definitely an improvement, right? No, oh, wait. You know, the Biden administration managed to ruin that as well. And it's due to military bureaucracy, probably. You know, the $100 hammer sort of ordeal. What you should have done is just get a bunch of uh, random dudes in the army to, to hash them together. And then you should have ignored the fact that a bolt came loose and, and in the rough seas or two bolts or something like that and just offload it anyway. I mean, it's not like it's physically impossible now, is it? The thing is that when you have a situation where it's not an existential sort of crisis for your nation, so this isn't D-Day or something like that, you, there is a tendency towards heavy-handed bureaucracy, making sure that everything is spit shine and everything is perfect. We can't offload because of that one bolt, in other words. I guarantee that if it were an existential threat to the United States, you would act differently. Now, wouldn't you? Um, the fact is, though, this is just aid shipments. So you really think they care about the people of Palestine and the fact that some of them are literally starving right now? Little kids all malnourished with their bellies all puffed up and shit like that, you know, weighing like five fucking pounds? No, they don't care about them. No, they don't give a shit. That's about all. Peace out.